One of the things that really attracts me to games is the visuals. And when I say visuals, I don't mean graphics, I mean visual art style. Browsing the internet, a game with some stunning art style caught my eye and I decided to check it out. What game is it? Hi everyone, my name is Jeremy and this is my non-spoiler review for Slave Zero X for the PS5. This game was developed by Poppy Works and published by Cigarette Interactive. Slave Zero X takes place in a dystopian futuristic world where there is a maximum ruler known as the Sovereign Khan. In this world, biomechas are being used as weapons. You play as Sho, who is part of a group called the Guardians who wants to stop these biomechas from being unleashed on the world. Sho steals a slave unit prototype and starts his pursuit towards killing the Sovereign Khan. This game's story is told through voice acted cutscenes, voice acted dialogue between characters, and documents called Chronicles. So let's talk about the visuals of this game. This game features some hand-drawn sprites, which look really good. The biomecha design looks like a mix of organic and mechanic, as the name suggests, and it looks very horror-inspired. The main character design reminds me of Justice from the Guilty Gear series, with a touch of horror. The backgrounds are 3D rendered, and the setting looks very industrialistic and futuristic looking. And there's a nice contrast between the hand-drawn sprites and the 3D rendered backgrounds that gives this game a very unique feel. In regards to the music, the music feels very futuristic, techno, cyberpunk, and it goes extremely well with the setting. So let's talk about the gameplay. Slave Zero X is a 2.5 action game focused on fighting with style chaining strings of combos. The game is divided by stages where you will fight groups of enemies as you move towards the end of the stage. Stages are completely linear, and the objective is to reach the end of the stage. In this game you can run, slide, jump, double jump, dodge, you have a light attack, a heavy attack, and dodging gives you brief invincibility frames. You can also parry. The idea here is to change your attacks, creating combos to get better stylish ratings. When you combine light attacks and heavy attacks to perform EX moves, which are special moves that are stronger than regular attacks. As part of your HUD, you have a life bar, a meter bar, your burst orb to activate burst, which repels all enemies around you, and that can be used to escape when you are stone locked and surrounded by enemies. You also have an ammo indicator for items that you find that you can throw against enemies. When your meter bar is at 100%, you can use Fatal Sync. During this state, EX moves are free and you drain life from your enemies when you hit them. This will deplete your bar slowly and the effect will stop once you don't have any more meter. In terms of enemy design, the game features a decent amount of enemy variety, each with their own moveset. The game also has bosses, which have some incredible designs because they are biomechas too. You also have a store where you can buy upgrades, items, and different color palettes for your character with the currency that you earn by completing the stages. And hidden away in the stages you can find the Chronicles, which you get if you defeat certain golden enemies that are hidden away. These Chronicles add more information regarding to the story. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of this game. In terms of the pros, the main thing that I want to point out is the visual art style and character design. The characters look incredible, and the visual art style really sticks with you, and it's very pleasing to look at. It looks really cool. So let's talk about the cons, and I have a few big ones, because I had some troubles with the gameplay mechanics, among other things. The first con that I would point out is the story presentation. I found the story and premise of this game to be very interesting. But sadly, it bothers me to say that the game doesn't really give you much context to the story if you go straight into playing the game. All of the information, or most of the information that I gave you guys in the premise section of this review, is because I went into the game's webpage and read the premise. Because if you start playing the game without doing that, you won't have enough context to really understand in detail what the game is about. Besides that, another thing that happened regarding the story presentation that really bothered me is that there is a lot of important dialogue that happens between characters while you're playing. And because this is an action game and it goes for a Devil May Cry style of gameplay where you need to be doing stylish combos, it's very hard to pay attention to what they're saying or get engaged in what they're saying if you're so focused in the fighting. 
My other complaint, and it's the main complaint in regards to the gameplay, is that the gameplay is repetitive and it lacks mechanical depth. The gameplay of this game is very reminiscent of Guilty Gear and Devil May Cry, and this is explicitly acknowledged by the developers as some of their inspirations. There are some very good and unique foundations here, and I really like the fact that the game focuses on you doing combos and getting stylish ratings, but honestly, I felt like it needed to be more elaborate and more polished. Despite the combo system having a lot of potential, I feel like the game needed more mechanics and ways to expand the character's gameplay abilities to keep it engaging and fun as you went through the game. The game feels as if you played Devil May Cry, but you have to play the entire game with the initial weapons and moveset that Dante has. What makes Devil May Cry work is that there's a solid foundation in terms of mechanics and they get expanded by adding more weapons and abilities to the main character, keeping the gameplay engaging and fresh. This game lacks that, and it desperately needs it. Besides, the boss fights were a mixed bag. They looked incredible, but fighting them didn't feel very good. I'm not sure what it is, but I feel like it had to do with the feedback of hitting and dodging the boss. It felt a little bit off. So in conclusion, despite Slave Zero X having an attractive visual art style and setting, and promising combat mechanics, the game rings hollow at its core gameplay loop. There's a sound idea at the heart of the mechanics, but it still needs to be developed more. The gameplay loop is too repetitive and gets boring very fast. Sadly, for this reason, I don't recommend Slave Zero X for the PS5. So that's gonna be it for my non-spoiler review of Slave Zero X. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. To recover? No, the master. You, a guardian, and a defective slave unit. Now it all makes sense. Prepare for a perfect death. Do you have any idea who I am? I don't care. I am the Sovcom's blade. You must have thought this slave unit would bring you power, but power is nothing without control. Hi everyone, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with our content.